All right, boys and girls, welcome back once again. Today we're going to be talking about how we use the exponents to name place value units and explain patterns in the placement of the decimal. So let's take a look at what they want us to do here. It says write the following in exponential form. So you have 100 is equal to 10 to the second power. Uh, I automatically notice a pattern here. I see that my 100 has two zeros and my exponent is two. So with using that same information, whenever I have, whenever I have the zeros after my one in my standard form, I'm going to just convert that to exponential form by placing the amount of zeros as my exponent. Let's take a look here. So for a thousand, I have one, two, three zeros. So I'm going to put ten. To the third power. 10 times 10 is equal to what? 100. If we were to multiply it out, and that would be equal to the same thing here two zeros in my factors, and I have 10 to the second power. Now we have 100,000. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, and I'm just going to put 10 to the fifth power. You should see the pattern here. One, two, three zeros, 10 to the third for 100 times 10. And a million has one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And I'm just going to put 10 to the sixth power. One, two, three, four, five zeros, 10 to the fifth power for 10,000 times 10. Moving on. Four, times 10 to the second power. Once again, we have two zeros here. We know that that's going to be 400. Four, in this case, my first factor. And then I'm saying, well, multiplying by how many? That's 10 to the third power, which is equal to 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. I'm going to write my three zeros in. And I'm going to go to B here. Same thing. Write my whole number, 64 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 and that's going to be four zeros one two three four then i go back and place my comma in to get six hundred forty thousand. so now i have 5300 or 5300 divided by 10 to the second power 10 to the second power is equal to 100. I know that I'm going to have my decimals going to start here in 5,300 and it's going to move back one, two place values. And that's how we come up with our, and that's how we come up with our quotient of 53. Let's take a look at this uh, here on the place value chart. If we notice, we started off with our 5,300 or 5,300 on the place value chart here. And we divide it by 100. So when we divide by 100, what we're doing is we're moving over one unit and then another base 10 unit. And when we do that, it appears that the decimal is moving, but what's really happening is the number is being divided by 10, and then it's being divided by 10 again, and we're going to get 53. So keep that in mind. A lot of people are asking, can we just move the decimal? Once you get a better understanding of how to manipulate the numbers, you can just move the decimal. But keep in mind that the decimal's actually not moving. The decimals don't move. It's the actual number that's moving when it's being divided. It's decreasing by one-tenth of the amount because you're dividing by 10. So in this case, it was divided by 10 and then divided by 10 because we moved two place value units. All right, let's move on to D, looking at D. And similar to what we did with C, we have the same 53 up front, but now it's out to our millions place. So we have 5,300,000 divided by 10 to the third power. You should know that 10 to the third power is equal to 1,000. So we're going to go one, two, three jumps. And our new number is going to be 5,300. Watch the patterns here. Once again, that was one, two, three movements. 
All right, so looking at E here, we have 6 and 72 thousandths times 10 to the third power. We know that 10 to the third power is equal to 10 times 10 times 10, which is three zeros or a thousand. So that would be three place value units. I know I'm going to multiply and it's going to increase times 10 times 10 times 10. So what we would have on our place value chart is this number moving from here. It'll move over one, two, three base 10 units to now become 6,072. All right. So remember each one of these units and what I like to do is just put this here and put times a thousand. If you want, if you have to make your place value chart, this was times 10, then you multiply that number by 10. That's how we came up with that answer for E. Now we have 60 and 72 hundredths times 10 to the fourth power. So what we're going to do is we know that we're multiplying and we're increasing. So this number here is going to go up by four. I'm going to jump one, two, three, four spaces in the placeholders. So now we have 607,200 for our product. For G, we have 948 as a three in my exponent. So using mental math here, I'm just going to go one, two, three places over. My new number is going to be at zero ones and 948 thousandths. And once again, if you needed to use a place value chart, you know that you're dividing by three tens. Once I divide by 10 the first time, it's going to go down to 94 and 8 tenths. Then I'm going to divide by 10 again, and it's going to go down to 9 and 48 hundredths. And then I'm going to divide by 10 my final time, or my quotient for G is going to be 948 thousandths. And remember, this was divided by 1,000. We had 1, 2, 3. Let me, let me make sure you get all the way to that box. You don't want to get stuck in the wrong box. H is 9 and 4 tenths divided by 10 to the second power. I know that 10 to the second power is equal to 10 times 10, which is equal to 100. So once I know that, I can say, okay, well, using my little trick here that we talked about in class, I'm just going to say, okay, I need to move over two place values, so it's going to be one, two. And you say, how did you know to move in that direction? When you're dividing something, the number is going to decrease. The only way I can make this decimal appear to move and the number decrease is moving by moving this way. And here it is again. We would have nine and four tenths divided by 10. 94 hundredths divided by 10 gives us 94 thousandths. And of course, don't be confused. If you have it on your, your place value chart, you do need to put a placeholder in here. By putting this placeholder in here, you're letting everyone know that there are no tenths. If you don't put this placeholder here, when you rewrite your number up here, you may incorrectly write it as 94 hundredths instead of 94 thousandths. And that's, remember, that's a huge difference. 94 hundredths is 10 times bigger than 94 thousandths. Let's see what we have here. It says complete the pattern. The pattern shows us that we go from two hundredths to two tenths. From two hundredths to two tenths, let's take a look on our place value chart here. All right, so if I have my two hundredths, to go from two hundredths to two tenths, I had to multiply by 10, right? When I'm one place value unit, so I multiply by 10. So in essence, what I'm gonna do is multiply each one of these numbers by 10. So I have two hundredths times 10 equals two tenths. Two tenths times 10 equals what? Well, let's start off in our tenths. If I started off with two tenths, so if I started off with two tenths and I moved over one place value unit to here, I would have zero tens and two ones, which is equal to what number? Two, that's correct. So this is going to be equal to two. And I know that if I started off with two in my ones place and I multiplied it by 10, this two would go to the tens place. Now I have two tens and zero ones. So my number would be 20. So now if I had 20 and I multiply that 20 by 10, I'm going to go from 20 
it's going to get 10 times bigger and now I'm going to have 200 and you should notice the next number in the pattern is going to be 2000 you should notice the pattern if we start all the way at the beginning and our pattern is you went from two hundredths to two tenths to two to two tens to two hundredths two thousand all right so let's see if we can do the same thing here without using our place value chart now feel free to push pause and use the place value chart if you need to i'm just going to walk through this using my patterns so i noticed that here i have three million four hundred thousand and i have one two three four five zeros my next number that they give me in the pattern is th i'm sorry thirty four thousands i have one two three zeros so i have five zeros and then i went to three zeros so that means i lost two zeros if i lose two zeros that means that i'm dividing by what Yes, you're dividing by 100. So if I said 34,000 divided by 100, it's going to lose two more zeros. So this answer, next answer is going to be 340. So now I have 340, and this answer is given to me. The next number in the pattern is given to me. Let's duplicate that. So if I had 340 and I divided by 100, I would go over one place and then over two places because I'm dividing by 10 and then I'm dividing by 10 again. That's how we came up with this three and four tenths. Remember, this is just a placeholder here. It has no value. It says I have three ones, four tenths, and no hundredths. So it's the same thing as three and four tenths. All right. So now if we divide this number here, three and four tenths by 100, I'm going to write in two zeros to represent my 100 that I'm dividing by. And which side am I going to write them on? Am I going to write it on my left side or my right side? Correct. I'm going to write it here. So we have this number here. My decimal originally started here. So I'm going to go one, two places over. That's going to be my new number. And I'll show you that on the place value chart once again. So let's take a look here. Let's see. I'm dividing this three and four tenths divided by 100. So when I do that, it's so going to go from three and four tenths divided by 10 is going to go over one place value and then divided by another 10, which is going to be our divided by 100. It's going to end up here. Now, keep in mind, you have to write in that zero. If you do not write that zero in, you're going to possibly make a mistake and rewrite this number incorrectly as 34 hundredths instead of 34 thousandths. And you don't need a zero in your ones place. More than likely, um, if you see me writing it, I usually will put one there. So let's get one there now. So we have zero ones, zero tenths, three hundredths, and four thousandths. So this number is read thirty-four thousandths. All right, moving on to C. So I don't have two numbers in a row to recognize my pattern like I did in the beginning here. So they gave me these first two. They gave me these first two here. I have blank, then I have uh, a number, another blank, and then I have a number. So what I'm going to do is come here to find out what they're asking me to do. So from 85 and 7 tenths to 8 and 57 hundredths, did this number get bigger or smaller? Obviously, it got smaller. So if we got smaller, what operation are we doing? Good answer. We are dividing. So we know that we are dividing by what number? Our decimal appears to have moved from between the 5 and the 7 to between the 8 and the 5, meaning that we're going to be dividing by 10. So let's take a look here. If we're dividing by 10, going this way, we're going to have to multiply by 10 to go here. As we move, let's divide our C into two parts. As we move this way, the number is going to get smaller. But from this 85, as we move this way, the number is going to get bigger. So let's take a look here. First, we're going to just finish this one, the, the rest here. So we have 8 and 57 hundredths. We know that it's moving one place value. I'm going to put two zeros in just because I know a mental math that I'm going to have my 8. We have 8 and 57 hundredths. I'm going to add a zero, and I know that my decimal was here, and now it's going to appear to be here. And in the opposite direction, I know that this decimal is going to move from here to here. Because this is going to be 857. 
Same thing here, my 857, I move one place over to get my zero here. So now I'm just gonna have another zero for this one. It's gonna be 85,700. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. If you have any issues with this, uh, see me first thing in the morning so that we can discuss how that pattern worked where you do not have two numbers that are together in the pattern at the beginning of the pattern. Here it's pretty simple. We have 444, no zero, 444, one zero, 444, two zeros. Next in the pattern is going to be what? Exactly. You have your 444, and then you have three zeros. You make this number 444,000. Same thing. Then we're going to increase our zeros to four to give us. 4,444,000 to give us 4,440,000. Lastly, we're going to add in one, two, three, four zeros. So now we're going to add in five zeros. 44,400,000. All right. So for E, to go from nine and five tenths back. I know going from nine and five tenths forward here, I had to multiply by 100. So to go the opposite way, I'm going to have to do what? Divide by 100. So I'm going to add my zeros in. And one, two, move my decimal place here. Now here we're going times 100 again. You had one zero. And then here's our 100, our two zeros here. And then we're just going to do the same thing we did in D and increase by two zeros for each time. All right, so now I have nine, five, my three zeros, plus my two, two more to give me my 100. And then I have nine, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros to give us 950 million. All right, hopefully. That made a lot of sense to you, and we had some aha moments and closed some gaps. Please ask me any questions uh, first thing in the morning that relating to this homework. As always, like and subscribe. Hopefully, this was helpful.